Yo, what's going on, world? It's your boy, Mr. Las Vegas, and we get it again. Hey, for the record, this the last Prison Chronicles. This the last Prison Chronicles. Uh, the series, it did good, uh, but, you know, I really believe it should have did better than what it did. But it is what it is. The show must go on. I'm going to hit y'all with a whole bunch of brand new content. We going in another direction. Uh, especially like after I dropped that OJ uh, series. That shit was supposed to really go viral and really blow up. And it didn't. So you know the show must go on like I said. Before I get into it. I need y'all to like. Subscribe. Hit that notification button. That way every time your boy drop. You alerted. You did. And hey man start following my music. Uh, I'm clowning with the music right now. As y'all see, look that up. That's the Mr. Las Vegas brand. You know, L-S sign, dollar sign, V-E-G-S sign, dollar sign. That's how you spell it. You dig? With the logos and shit. But uh, yeah, man, on this series right here, we gonna... Uh, this is all about how to ball, how to get rich, how to feed your family from behind the walls right how to be successful from behind the walls this whole episode right here is strictly about that what to do when to do and how to do when you get locked up and it starts from the county jail you know it starts from the county jail but the county jail we ain't going to dig into that we talking about somebody when you get 10 years Five years are better, ten years are better, and so on and so forth. What do you do? How do you survive? How do you feed your family? How does the show go on now that you're incarcerated, right? So when you uh, get locked up and you go to the county jail, there's morals, principles, and values right from the jump that you need to learn and you need to start from jump. And that means once you get behind them walls, you need to be quiet as a church house mouse. You know, the loud motherfucker in the room is the goofiest motherfucker in the room. The quiet, the quiet guy in the room is the one everybody going to pay attention to. And that's the one that everybody going to fuck with. Now, we're not saying being quiet and being soft. We're saying being quiet, be a man, and be willing to go about being a man at any time now i say that because now that you behind the, the walls only speak when you spoken to and even when you spoken to if this gentleman is not your cal uh, caliber of character don't even speak to him just nod him off you dig what i'm saying keep your circle under 10 under 5 if you can keep your circle very very small but whoever you hang out with or whoever you fuck with, make sure it's your family member or make sure it's somebody you know or make sure it's somebody that if you don't know them and you meet them in there, they going to stand on their own two feet just like you is. That way, if y'all get in to something, two can maneuver like five, six, seven, or ten if they vicious. You dig what I'm saying? Two men can accomplish a lot of things. Two men can... Do some major things in the penitentiary. I've seen it done. Uh, I've done it several times. Uh, just fucking with one motherfucker real solid. And we rocking. You know. Yeah I got partners. I got homeboys and shit like that. But when it came to getting money and shit like that. I would only fuck with one person. Maybe two at the most. And that's that. Anything that happened or pertained to that money. Me and this person or me and the other two people. Would handle that. And we know what we had to do as far as pressing motherfuckers about our money and different things of that nature. Uh, what was understood was no need to be explained, right? So when you get in there and you got a 10-year bid, a 15-year bid, 5-year bid, and so on and so forth. The first thing you need to do. See, everybody got their way of doing things, but you in prison, you got time to do. So don't rush nothing, you know. That be the main thing guys do when they go to prison they be in a rush to do shit 
No, nah, don't rush nothing. And prior to going to prison, make sure everybody that you fucked with on the streets, you had a 100% good relationship with them. And it was a good, and you was loyal to them. Because when you go behind them walls, them going to be the people you need to make whatever you're trying to make happen. Right? So if you in the streets uh, and you and you doing uh, things you know you don't supposed to be doing, you should have some emergency money put up. I say this again, if you in the streets and you doing things you know you're not supposed to be doing, you should have some emergency money put up. Now, that emergency money is for when you go to the pen. Preferably five bands. You know, you need to at least have five bands or be able to get on that phone and call for it if you need it. And it's and it's and it's done. If you're on a, another level, have ten bands put up, right? And if you're on a bigger level, have 20 or more put up, right? But the reason why I say you got to have at least a minimum of five bands if you're talking about going to the penitentiary and feeding your family and being able to survive and being able to take care of business out there and in there while you in the joint. Ain't nothing sweeter than... You got people maneuvering for you in the streets and you got 10, 15, 20 years to do and everything's running like a world oil machine. Now, the number one thing, once you have that money put to the side, get your mind off what your woman is doing, your wife is doing, your girlfriend is doing, your baby mama is doing. They're going to be loyal, they're going to be loyal. But if you got 15, 20 years to do, do not be caught up on what she doing with her vagina because that's not your job long as she being loyal to you and answering that phone and, and taking care of your business out there and helping you inside the penitentiary that's all that matter so get your mind hung up off that because if it was me in your situation and i go there that's the first thing i'm gonna get out of the back of my mind is what my woman doing as long as my woman is taking care of business and she making sure I got what I need and I make sure she got what she need. I'm not going to be hung up on what she doing for, on her vagina because I have no control over that. And uh, if you got a 10 year bid, 15 year, 20 year bid, that'll be selfish of you to tell your woman you don't want her messing around with nobody. Now, me having a woman and different things of that nature, I would just lace her like this. I'm going to give you some game. I would just lace her like this. Yeah, baby. You can fuck with whoever you fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Just don't have nobody in the house or whatever. Go to their house. Da 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 da. You can get your rocks off. Get your get your little motherfucker fuck buddy or whatever if you want, and and get your rocks off. Just don't have nobody in the house. And give her free reigns to do her thing. Just give her free reigns to do her thing outside of the house. That's it. And answer this phone, right? And your job while you in the penitentiary is to. Do the same thing you was doing while you was out, while you was in the penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? Helping with bills, paying bills, card notes, you rent, all that shit. Boom. If y'all was going 50 50 when you was on the street, while you in the pen, you need the same activity. And you wouldn't have no problem out your woman. If you just calling your woman for money, money, money all the time and you ain't putting nothing in the pot, you shouldn't be mad when she run off. Because you ain't doing your job. You take it, but you ain't giving nothing. It ain't nothing worse than a nigga that got a whole bunch of time. And he called this woman every day, all day. She paying all this money on the phone. And he ain't doing nothing but take it from her. And she ain't getting nothing back. That shit's going to get old. Your bitch is going to run off. Believe that, right? So that's the format and that's the formula on how you need to have that set up prior to going. Now when you go... You done already trained your woman. You done already trained your your, your wife. You done already trained your side. You, you know, you done already trained a motherfucker on what to do, when to do, and how to do it. So when you go there, it's autopilot. You got the bag put up, boop, boop, boop. Your girl already know what to do, woo, woo, woo. Now, this where the real game come in at, right? See, me, I, I be, I'm always patient. You have to be patient. That's the number one rule to this shit. So... Me, I'm waiting six months to a year before I bust a move. 
I might tell, listen, baby, you're going to put this on my books for the next six months. I'm not doing nothing. I need to peep out who the big players is, who got whatever going on. And then once I figure that out, I get the introduction and then boom, it's on. We're going to be rocking and rolling. But give me some time. Give me, I at least need six months to a year. You dig what I'm saying? That's why I say you need to have money saved. Because if you got five beds saved, you should have you should have your wife or your girlfriend put two beds on there. Right? That two beds need to last you a year. You know? That two beds need to last you a year, player. And uh, so she don't got to put no money on your books. She don't got to put no money on the phone. You got two bands on your books. And you ready to roll. Now you got three brands to play with now. You dig what I'm saying? Once you meet the, the connections and once you get introduced who you need to get introduced to, now you can play, right? So now that those six months or you know, or that year done went by, you done got connected to who you need to get connected to, and now it's on. Because a band run a long way in the penitentiary. 1,500 run a long way in the penitentiary. Two bands run a long way in the penitentiary. 3,000 run a super long way in the penitentiary, right? So you got to think. If you meet the connect, if you throwing him a band, he going to move. If you throwing him 1,500, he going to move. If you throwing him two bands, he going to move. I recommend throw the two bands out there and, and have a band tuck. Throw the two bands out there. That's what you finna play with. That's what you finna use to get introduced to the game in the penitentiary. That's what you finna use to get the money rolling in the penitentiary. That's what you finna use to help yourself in the penitentiary. That's what you finna use to help your family on the streets from the penitentiary. And you're going to take that. You're going to keep flipping that, rolling that, and you're going to keep your machine rolling. Now, now that you got this done, we have an old saying in, in, in the joint. If I'm the one getting it, I don't need to be the one distributing it, right? So you have to find you somebody that's loyal. And stand up and got a heart and ain't taking no bullshit. And that's the nigga that you put on and you have pushing your shit while you relax. Your job is to get it. Once you get it, he distributed it. Y'all getting money, right? And the machine is rolling. It's a world oil machine. It's rolling. And you keep it going like that. And you'll never miss. you have money the whole time you're in the penitentiary. That five thousand to turn into ten, it will turn into fifteen, it'll turn into twenty. Now your bag up. Now you can throw five bands into this. You feel me? Now you can throw six bands into this, four bands into that, and and the money is coming ridiculous. You dig what I'm saying? Now you you lace your partner. He can get hot because he the distributor. You lace your partner. Now if your partner get hot and he happen to go to the hole or get caught with product and different things of your nature. Your job is, when that happens, and you done already groomed him for this, when that happened, okay, look, man, if you fall, I got you. I'm going to have wifey shoot you some money, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to have my people check you out. So from there, depending on what type of player he was and what type of distributor he was for you, you had your people because he's done got hit. You had him put 500 to to 1000 on his books, and he got to ride that out. Now, when he get out or whatever and he get back around you, Boom, the show must go on. But he's been getting money with you the whole time. So he should be saving and he should have a bag too. But still, out of loyalty, and you know he's a distributor, you still make sure you put five to a thousand on his books. And boom, the show must go on. Now you rolling you by yourself. You can't be hand to hand. You the nigga that's getting the product. So you gotta go find somebody else to move the product. I don't give a fuck if it takes a month. Three till you fill everybody out. By this time, you've been in prison a minute. So by this time, a year done passed, you should know who good and who ain't good. Because the whole time you was in there, you supposed to been observing everybody, filling everybody out. And when I say that, that don't mean you have to mingle with them. You just sit back, relax, and watch the show. Man, hey, prison is a motherfucker. You just sit back, relax, watch the show, stay on your workout. Stay doing you. Be on your phone, in your room. You you create your program. You work out, 
you, you, you do your little phone thing. You might find your chess partner or something like that. And you back to your room. That's your program. Staying out mingling with niggas and talking the frivolous shit, hearing all the war stories. That's not for you. That's not for you. Stay away from that, right? Stay away from that. Because that makes you vulnerable and that makes motherfuckers be able to come around you and fill you out. You don't want, one of the worst things in prison is don't let niggas fill you out, man. Don't let them fill you out. I never let niggas fill me out. That's why niggas couldn't figure me out. Because I didn't let them fill me out. Don't let niggas fill you out. That's the worst thing you can do in the penitentiary. Believe that, right? So now, if he get caught, you looking for the next person to distribute. You find you the next person, the show must go on, the show must go on, the show must go on. Now, if something happened that happened to happen and you get caught, right? Now, you always have to have a safe place to put your shit. So wherever you get to put your shit at, because you're not never, they're not never supposed to Hit your room and catch you. You know, I learned the hard way with that. And then I learned from it and it never happened again. But they not never supposed to catch you with nothing. So you get a motherfucker that the distributor's job is to get a motherfucker that's trustworthy to hold the shit. Right? And y'all pay him. Or he don't do nothing. He just hold it. Y'all pay him. He sit on his ass. That's what you want. Hey, yo, yeah, you find your OG, somebody real cool, calm and collected. And you, you had him hold it. Their job is just to hold it and relax. That's it, right? Something happened, boom, boom, boom. You know who got it. Boom, boom, boom. You chip him off, get your shit. Short story, long story, right? So, now that you acclimated, you don't got to worry about the home front because it's good because you're taking care of it. You're a man, right? You got to take care of the home front. That's the number one thing because if the home front is taken care of, then you taken care of in the penitentiary. If your your significant other is out there struggling and you in prison doing good that's a bad look you did so you make sure the home front is good the home front is good now you can be fat as you want you can have all the food you want all of uh, everything that you want in the penitentiary to keep you comfortable comfortable you can have all that and uh you can only get so much in prison so once you got so much in prison you keep the money out there you stack money on your books right and then you stack money on the streets and you make sure your significant other is getting bread. And you just keep that going like that, man, to the wheels burn off. And, you know, that's an A to Z on how you're supposed to move and how you're supposed to control things from the streets to the penitentiary. And it's by making sure the home fund is taken care of. Right. That's the most important thing. Right. And as you go, you might recruit another person here, or another person there, because it'd be some little solid youngsters that be, some of them be outcast or some of them be from different hoods, but they homeboys don't be looking out for them. And, you know, you take your little youngster, you put him up under your wing, you lace him up, you give him a little game. And if he fits your program, then you send him to the distributor and then the distributor controls him. Yeah, he can come around you. He can hang out with you, different things of that nature. But the distributor gives him the game. On how he support y'all, so y'all maneuvering and how y'all making money and how he how he gonna make money. He just keep it going like that, man. It's a it's a world. It's a well oiled machine. The it it, it, it it it's 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 never broke. Uh, and man, listen, I'm telling you some real shit. If you follow this guideline right here, you'll never lose in a penitentiary. Your family will always be right. And when you leave out of there to come home, guess who going to be there? The one that was with you before you left because you took care of your home front. Mr. Las Vegas for the record. And I'm out.